Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. It's been a while since we covered wheel guns, but uh, this feels like it's going to be a revolver kind of year. So to start out, I thought I would share some tips for shooting small frame snub nose revolvers. Snubbies are among the most difficult guns to master. They are a devious little combination of four traits, any one of which make a handgun challenging to shoot. Number one, the sights. They're usually small and difficult to see with a short sight radius. Number two, recoil. Snubbies are designed to be as light and concealable as possible, and they're often chambered for cartridges that were originally designed for full-size service revolvers. Number three, the trigger. They tend to be heavy with a long travel. And number four, the grip. They're typically small with minimal surface area and that only amplifies all the other three problems. When we try to address these four issues, another challenge we run into is that there are not many one size fits all solutions for the snub nose. You really have to tweak the gear and the techniques depending on the individual, maybe even more so than you do with other types of handguns. Hand geometry is a major variable from person to person. Um, and some people just might value concealment over shootability or vice versa. So I'm going to give some very broad suggestions for hardware selection and shooting technique, but there are a lot of other valid ways to approach the snub nose. Let's look at the issue of sights first. The sights on most snubbies are garbage and there's really not a whole lot we can do about it. There are a few exceptions, but if uh, you want a lightweight, two inch snub nose, your sight options are generally between bad and worse. Some models do come with a pinned front sight like this one, so uh, you can swap it out for a high visibility aftermarket sight. Those are usually too tall, like this one, uh, so you get a really weird, unconventional sight picture. So I typically just use the factory front sight and I add some bright orange nail polish. Now there's plenty of different types of paint and nail polish colors that work just fine, but a lot of you guys have asked me what I use. So for the last seven or eight years, I have been using this same bottle from the brand Salon Perfect. It's nothing special. I think I got it at a drugstore or a big box store or something like that. Uh, but it works really well. And the key here is to apply a couple of base coats of white before you put on the orange. Then when you add the orange, it'll really pop out uh, more so than without the white. The rear sight is uh, usually just a trench style notch cut in the top strap. I don't attempt to make any alterations if the gun has a black finish. Uh, for a stainless or silver type finish like this one, I will black out the rear sight. You can use just a Sharpie for that, but you'll have to touch it up every couple of weeks. I like the Birchwood Casey Super Black touch-up pins, the flat black version. That usually lasts for at least a few months. Laser grips like these are another sight option to consider. I generally think of those as more of a supplement to the sights rather than a replacement. They're a complete game changer in a low light situation. And depending on the type of laser grips, they're somewhere between mediocre and useless in uh, bright sunlight. If you can find laser grips that come in a shape and size that works well for you regardless of the laser, I would say they're worth the expense. Uh, definitely not a mandatory accessory though. Okay, so how about recoil? That's a common complaint with the snub nose, but it really has a simple solution. Just choose a gun and a ammo combo with recoil that you can manage easily. If you're just merely tolerating the recoil, you're never gonna put in the range time that's necessary to shoot a snub nose well. The heavier steel frame models will soak up more recoil. They're definitely easier to shoot than the alloy or the polymer lightweight guns. For me, the main appeal of the snub nose is that you can get a super lightweight gun that's much easier to draw and to hang on to than a tiny pocket sized semi-auto of the same weight. I think the weight of the gun should be based on your carry needs, and then you choose a caliber and ammo that's appropriate for a gun of that weight. For the lightweight models, just forget about shooting 357 Magnum. That's just absurd. Even the 38 Special is a challenge in the lighter guns, so consider using lead wad cutter ammo. 
They're not always super easy to find, but wad cutters are among the softest shooting 38 loads available. Velocity and recoil vary a lot by manufacturer. The lower velocity loads are really good for practice. The higher velocity options actually work well for self-defense. We've got a whole video about that from a while back if you wanna know more. The smaller calibers really turn these guns into something most shooters can master with a lot less effort. The Goldilocks option, I think, is the Ruger LCR chambered for 327 Federal Magnum. Load it with six rounds of 32 H&R Magnum or even 32 long, and you've got a snub nose in easy mode. The catch is that the ammo is somewhat obscure usually costs a little more than the mainstream calibers. So for absolute minimal recoil without the ammo availability issues, you, you've got several options in 22 long rifle and 22 Magnum. That bumps your ammo capacity up to seven or eight rounds. The trade-off there is that the triggers on the rimfire models are a little heavier to help set off those primers. Okay, now that's the easy stuff out of the way. The rest of this is all about grip and trigger press because that's really at the heart of running a snubby well. We'd like to achieve multiple trigger presses in rapid succession without steering the muzzle off target. How do we do that with a really small grip and a long, heavy trigger? We'll start with the hardware side of this, the physical grips on the gun, grip panels or stocks or whatever you wanna call them. One of the advantages of a snub nose is that you can change these really easily. There are dozens of serviceable aftermarket options for the common revolver models. You've probably heard before that you need a grip that fits your hand. Grip fit is important for managing recoil and for the trigger press. It's not as critical with a really soft recoiling gun or if you've got a light trigger. As the recoil increases and the trigger gets heavier, you will need more pressure on the grip to control that, and that requires a grip that fits your hands. But let's assume you also have chosen a snubby because you want to maximize concealment. So then you have to balance concealability and grip size. So if that's the case, I suggest you start with the shortest grip possible. That still allows room for your pinky on the grip. Now you don't need the whole pinky on the grip necessarily. This grip is just about as short as they come and I can just barely wrap my pinky around the bottom corner there, but that's enough to exert some pressure. I, I like to use my ring finger and my pinky to kind of squeeze the grip into my palm. That helps to counteract some of the lateral pressure that I'm inevitably gonna exert on the gun with my trigger press. If I can't get my pinky on there, I find that a lot more difficult. For me, grip circumference is just as important as the length. That impacts trigger reach, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but there's more to it than that. And to be completely honest, it's kind of difficult to articulate. I find that a lot of snubby grips are not quite thick enough, especially in this area between the top of the back strap and just behind the trigger guard. If that's too narrow, like it is with this Kimber, uh, I get the wrong angle on the trigger. I can't find enough surface area to properly squeeze the grip. It just feels off. There's just no substitute for experience here. I know it can get expensive to buy a bunch of different aftermarket grips to try out. It might be worth it because that can make an enormous difference in how well you can control the gun. If you feel like the gun is wanting to sort of squirm around in your hand as you press the trigger, even when you're just doing dry repetitions, you might benefit from a different set of grips. Of course, grip technique makes a big difference too, but again, individual hand geometry means there's no universal solution for everyone. You won't find a ton of variation on the dominant hand placement. Just get the web of the hand nice and high on the back strap. For the support hand, I like to start with my index finger pressed up against the bottom of the trigger guard, meaty part of the palm presses right into the nail of my middle finger. There's usually not enough room for my palm to make direct contact with the grip, so it just squeezes in like that. The thumbs can really go anywhere there's room for them. I tend to use the classic crossed thumbs and I tuck them in real tight like that but I might do something a little different depending on what gun I'm shooting. The main thing here is that I'm just trying to make sure I keep the thumbs out of the way 
of my trigger finger. All right, now let's look at the trigger press. And I'm not gonna get into the basics of double action trigger manipulation. I've covered that elsewhere. If there's any nuance here that is specific to shooting a snub nose, I think it is trigger finger placement. Don't get too wrapped up on whether you press the trigger with the pad of your finger or the joint or crease, or even with the second segment of your finger. Use however much trigger finger you need in order to get enough leverage for that heavy trigger. Place your finger in a spot where the force you exert on the trigger is mostly straight back. And I say mostly because it's physically impossible to move your trigger finger straight back. Our fingers are a series of hinge joints and hinges move in arcs, not straight lines. So the face of the trigger may actually roll across your finger as you press, kind of like a more subtle version of what I'm doing here. And you're gonna have some side to side pressure from your trigger finger. You just have to use your grip to sort of cancel that out. With a snub nose, I personally, I tend to press with the crease of my finger and sometimes even onto the middle segment a little bit. That might be somewhat unconventional, but it gives me the cleanest possible trigger press. The trigger reach, if that is too long or too short, it can be very difficult to press straight back. I have long fingers and snub nose grips tend to just be too narrow for me. So if the trigger reach is too short, my trigger finger will start out at like a right angle before I even start pressing the trigger. And if that's the case, I can't press the trigger straight back without pulling it over to the right. My finger doesn't really have anywhere to go. It wants to sort of curl inward. And so if I've got a longer trigger reach, my finger will start out at a wider angle and it's a lot easier for me to press straight back. Now, having said all of that, the number one thing you can do to improve your snub nose performance is dry practice. And I'll be the first to admit that dry practice can be super boring, however, there's really no way around it in this case. If you want to have a decent double action trigger press, you have to put in some dry repetitions. I hope you guys found some of that helpful. If so, please subscribe to our channel. And the next time you need ammo, be sure to get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.